Welcome to episode 4 of the custom mob series. In this episode I'll go over showing when your mob takes damage and changing the model for its death. I'll also go over two different ways of animating your mobs, whether that be for movement, attacks, or anything else you would want an animation for. Here are some timestamps for easy navigation, and remember that you could always skip around or watch at higher speeds to get exactly what you want out of the video. A more detailed table of contents can be found in the description. Okay, so last time I created a snake and added all of the custom attacks for the custom mob, but I had a red snake, but I changed it to a purple snake this time just so we could see the damage more clearly because when a mob takes damage it turns red and that would be hard to see on a red snake. So right now the issue is that when you punch it, it just stays the same color even though when in Minecraft most mobs when you punch it, it gets tinted red. So this is what we want to add to our mob. So the way that we're going to detect when it takes damage is by using the hurt time tag. So if I use the data get command and just use tab to autofill the UUID and I use it on this entity, you'll notice that there's a tag here called hurt time 0s. And when a mob takes damage, it's set to 10. And I'll show you that here. So let me just punch it and then immediately get the data. So you'll notice that when I took the hurt time just after punching it, it went all the way up to 7. And so what actually happens is it gets set up to 10 and then counts down in ticks. So it has hurt time and lasts for 10 ticks. So we're going to use that hurt time tag in order to detect when the mob takes damage. But first of all, I'm going to create a new function file which runs on all mobs within range of the player that will handle all of the animations, whether that be for taking damage or animating movement or anything else like that. So what I'm going to do is add an execute command here. I already wrote these up. It's easier for me to explain all of the commands when I already wrote them instead of me having to write them again. So I'm just going to do execute as all entities which have the tag of custom mob one, which we added in the first video and type of silverfish because that's the base mob that we chose and then at that position of the custom mob and then if there's a player nearby because we don't need to animate it if there's no one to actually watch the animation so you just set this radius to whatever you want and then we're going to run the function mob demo mob one animate so I just created a new MC function file here and you could either do that through VS code or just create a new text file and rename it inside of your file system and now I'm going to show you the two commands that I'm going to be using to show the damage. So I execute if the current entity, which is the silverfish that is the custom mob, then if it has hurt time value of 10, which means it just got hit, then I will run a data merge command to replace the model on the armor stand's head with the new model, which is just a tinted red version of the original snake. So what I'm doing is data merge entity for the nearest armor stand in a two block radius that also has the tag of custom mob one. Then the data that I'm going to be merging is armor items and replacing the head slot, which is the last slot here. You could use MC stacker for these kind of commands. Then I'm replacing it with another brick. That just happens to be what I'm using for custom model data. Make sure you check out my custom model data if you don't know how to do this. And then I'm just setting it to this random number that I happen to set to the red tinted model. And we're going to do the exact same thing when the hurt time goes to 1s, which means it's almost over. The reason I don't do 0s is because that's what it is by default when it takes no damage, and I don't want it to constantly run this if it doesn't need to. So basically what happens is when it initially takes damage, replace with the red model, and when it's done taking damage, replace it with the normal model. So now if I go back to Minecraft and I reload, you'll notice that when I punch it, it actually turns red now. So it looks like all the other mobs that when you punch it, it gets tinted red. So that's the first part of what we're going to be doing today. And now let's move on to the next part. Okay, so something I have to explain really quick also before I go on to the death animation model and stuff like that is that I created a new MC function file called 20t.mc function, which functions basically the exact same way that loop.mc function works, except instead of running every single tick, it runs every 20 ticks or one second, and that just reduces the amount of commands run per tick. And the way that it works is that in load.mc function, I create a scoreboard objective of type dummy called mob demo time. And I just use this to manage the way that the 20t mc function runs. So in loop.mc function, every time this runs, it will add one to the fake player 20t 
score for mob demo time. I go over how to use fake players in how to spawn your own custom mobs in this series. So go check out the spawning video if you want to know how to use fake players. But every time that it hits the score of 20, I'm just going to run the function of mob demo 20t so that instead of running every tick, it runs every 20 ticks. And inside of 20t, I just moved over the spawning command because you don't need mobs to be spawned that often anyways. So once per second is fine. And then at the end of 20t, it just resets the score back down to zero so it could climb back up to 20 and run again. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm going to be using it for the command for the killing of the armor stand. Now let's move on to the death animations for our custom mobs. So what we had before was when the mob died, we basically just detected if the armor stands had any sort of actual custom mob near them. And if they didn't, then we would just kill off the mob. Now this has the issue of mobs that are close together. So we have these two snakes here, and when I kill one of them, you'll notice that even though one of them is not alive anymore, the model is still there. And the reason is that the other snake is still close enough for it to not kill itself. So we're going to be fixing that issue and we're also going to be adding an animation so it doesn't simply die. Because if you'll see with a normal mob, if I kill it, you'll see that it turns sideways and dies. But right now what we have is it just disappears. So the new system to detect the deaths of the mobs, instead of just detecting if the actual mob is no longer close to the armor stand, I'm going to be using a death loot table. And if you don't know how to create a loot table, make sure you go check out my video on it. But basically it just changes what the mob drops. So if I just add a custom item to the mob drops that can be detected, then I'll know that the mob has died nearby. So here inside of the loot table, I have added an extra item. So this is the normal item stuff. So we have like an apple and a nautilus shell that drops. But in addition to that, I added an additional roll for a command block that is guaranteed to drop every single time. So what it does is there's just a command block. It doesn't matter what item you choose. You just want any sort of item that you'll be able to detect. And then just set the tag to a custom tag that you'll be able to detect. So now every time the mob dies, it will guaranteed drop a command block with the tag of mob one dead one B. And that means all I have to do to detect any mob death is to look for any of these custom items. It's a lot more secure and consistent than having to try to detect if a mob is no longer close to the armor stand. In my loop MC function, in order to detect it, I'm doing execute as all entities of the type of item and it has to have the NBT matching the mob drop of a dead custom mob, which for me is the tag of mob one dead one B. And the item ID doesn't even matter because all you're trying to detect is your custom tag. And then if I detect this, then I know a mob has died and I will go to the position of that item and then run the function mob one death. Make sure to create a new MC function file for the death of your mob. So now inside of death.mc function, we have three main parts. So this will run on the nearest armor stand to the item which signifies a mob has died. And it has to be an armor stand that is tagged to actually be the custom mob without the tag of dead. I'll explain what that means later. And on that armor stand, it will do the exact same thing that we did for the mob that takes damage, which is replace the head item with a new model. And this model is basically the same thing as the red model, except rotated like sideways or upside down. And while we are changing the item on top of the armor stand, we also are changing it so that it is no longer a marker because the mark, the point of giving it the tag of marker 1b as we did in the summon command is to make sure it had no hitbox. But something that this also does is make it not affected by gravity, but I do want it to be affected by gravity as I'll explain later. And after we replace the model for the armor stand to be a dead model, then I will tag the armor stand with the tag of dead. And this signifies that my commands can come and clean it up later on. And then after all of this stuff is set up, then we kill at S and in this case at S is that custom item. So that's why it doesn't matter what item you use because the custom item will be killed anyways. So now what this ends up with is our mob has a dead model. It is tagged to be killed up by the commands later on. And we have gotten rid of the signifying item. So now in order to clean it up inside of our 20 TMC function, 
what I have here is a command that scans for any dead armor stance and cleans them up. So it will execute as all entities which are of the type armor stand and are the custom mob of course. And they have to be tagged to be killed so tag equals dead. And I also want to detect that it's on the ground because I want to make sure that the body of the mob lingers. Because if you go and see an example with like a zombie pigman for example. You'll see that the dead body of it doesn't disappear right away. It lingers for a bit, lands on the ground, and then disappears. So now that it has landed on the ground and has been tagged for dead, then that's when we want to clean it up. Now you will notice that the custom mob flips upside down and then dies. It might be hard to tell because I have a really thin model, but if you pay attention, you'll see that it does indeed flip upside down and die. So now we have the hurt model and the death model. Now well, let's move on to animations. For creating animated models for your custom mobs, I'm going to show you two different methods. The first way uses commands to switch out the model on an armor sans head, while the second method will use a single model that is animated through the use of partially transparent animated textures. The first method has a bit of less work on the modeling and texturing side of things, but uses more commands. It also gives you more control over each frame of your animation in game. The second method has more work on the modeling and texture side of things, but requires very few commands and is more efficient. It also makes the item animated in inventories. So before we get into the actual commands of the more command heavy of the two methods, what you want to first have set up for this method is more frames for your model animation. So for me I have a slithering snake, so I want to have the other stages of the slithering motion as separate models. So if you have a humanoid character, for example, you would have one model for the legs straight next to each other, and then maybe one or two for the right foot in front and one or two for the left foot in front. So it really depends on what model you have, for, and that will affect what type of animation you will have and how many more models you will have to create. So once you have that set up, make sure that you properly implement it into your custom item. I'm using another brick. Just watch my custom model data video if you don't know how to do that. But once that's set up, you are now able to move on to the commands. So now what we want to do is go into the animate function. And this is where we are going to be adding all of the commands for replacing the armor stands head model, which is how we're going to make the animation. So before we do that, we're going to have to initialize a scoreboard. So we're going to do scoreboard objectives add animate dummy and this will basically be a timer which tells our command our animate function when to swap out the model with the next frame of the animation. So we just create this scoreboard objective and then inside of animate which is running constantly on our mob when a player is nearby we want to ignore this first we are going to execute unless the mob is not moving then we will run the scoreboard player add at s for the custom mob and then animate one. So every time that the mob is actually moving, we're going to scale it up by one because we don't want to animate the moving animation if the mob's not moving, obviously. Now that we have that, what you'll see is if I reload and I do scoreboard objective set display sidebar and then I do animate. You'll notice that if I summon a custom mob that and I punch it to make it move, you'll see that when it moves, the scoreboard goes up. So now what we want is the detections for each stage of the animation. So we just do execute if the current custom entity, which is running the animate MC function. So if the entity has a score of five, and unless it is staying still, then we will swap out the item on the head of the armor stand in the same way that we've been doing it for the death of the mob and for the damage of the mob. And we'll swap it out with the next stage in the animation. I have a 5 tick gap between each frame, so 5, 10, 15, 20. But you could change it to whatever you want to make it smoother or more choppy depending on how detailed your models are or how smooth you need it to be. So I just keep going in intervals of 5 until it gets to the end. And once it gets to the end, then I will also add an additional one which resets the scoreboard. So it's the same exact uh, conditions as the rest of the commands which replace the model. But instead of replacing the model, we are running scoreboard players set at s animate zero to reset the scoreboard all the way down to zero so that the animate can count back up. So now if I go into survival mode, 
you'll notice that when the mob moves, it actually slithers around instead of just staying still. So as you can see, now we have fully implemented the movement animation of our mob, the damage animation of our mob, and the death animation of our mob. Now I'm also going to show you an additional way to add animated models for your mobs, which you might want to use or might not want to use. It depends. It's really personal preference and what situation you have. So this next method for creating animated models does not use commands to animate, but actually use animated textures. So it works kind of similarly to how water or magma blocks or prismarine blocks are animated. So as you can see here, this is an item which is inside of the item frame and it is naturally animated without commands, and it's even animated in my inventory. So as you can see, it's the model itself that's animated, and it's because of the transparent textures. So as you can see, it looks like that this lava shark from my nether pack is wagging its tail back and forth. However, what's actually going on is that there are three separate tails attached to the single model, but each tail has a different animated texture, and the animated texture is cycling through being transparent and not transparent. And that's, that gives the illusion that there is one tail wagging back and forth when it's actually three tails that are being cycled through. So I'll show you how to create the model and the animated textures to create this effect. All right, so I have my shark model open. And as you can see, it looks like there's only one tail, but there's actually three tails. Because if I highlight all of these other groups, you'll notice that there are more cubes that are just invisible because of the texture that are applied. So there's actually three tails, one, two, and three. And the main idea that you want to take away from this example is that you want to duplicate and adjust the parts that you want to be animated. So if you have a creature with eight legs, then you want to duplicate all eight legs and then move them or modify them a little bit into the next frame of the animation. And then just do that for however many frames of the animation you want. So the way to actually make this work once you have all of your duplicated appendages is to actually use animated textures. So I'll show you how to make an animated texture. Before we actually create the texture, we first have to plan out the frames that we will have to make for our texture. So as you can see, we have three different frames of our animation. So we have left tail active, middle tail active, and right tail active. So now I'm going to draw out a diagram. So there's going to be three columns, OK? This is going to represent the left tail, middle tail, and then right tail. So red means it is on, and then glass means we want a transparent texture. So first it's going to start off with the left tail being opaque and the other two tails being clear. So we want opaque, clear, clear, and then we want it to be the middle tail active. So it's going to be middle, and then it's going to be clear for the other two tails, and then it's going to be the right tail. So left, middle, right, middle, left, middle, and it's just going to keep going on like this. So as you can see, we have all the frames laid out. And I could fill this in with glass too if I want to. So this represents all of the frames. So the left side will have to be opaque and then clear. And then this will be clear, opaque, clear, opaque. But as you can see, this is going to continue on forever. But we could just cut it off right when it's going to start repeating. So this is left, middle, right, middle. And then it's going to go left, middle, right, middle again. So we could just cut off this entire repeating section. And as you can see, we're left with four frames of the animated texture. The left tail will have opaque, clear, clear, clear. The middle texture will be clear, opaque, op clear, opaque. And the right texture will be clear, clear, opaque, clear. So now that we have it planned out, we can actually create the texture. So now that we have the plan made out, what we have to do is make sure we have textures ready to turn it into an animation. So first, create a normal texture as you would normally in Blockbench. So for example, shark skin or whatever you're going to use, just create the basic texture that you're going to use for when the object is turned on. So for me, that's the tail texture, which is just shark skin. And you also want to have a completely clear texture to make it disappear. And you could do that through Blockbench just to uh, create texture. And then you could just call it clear and then hit confirm. And for color, just set it all the way down to zero opacity so that it's completely clear. And then hit the resolution, just make it match whatever the resolution is of your other texture. So this is 32 by 32. So I'm just going to change this resolution to 32 and hit confirm. Then just hit save and save it to whatever file you need it to save at. And I'm going to save this next to the other textures that I already have in the pack. Just hit save. And there you go. You got a clear texture. So now inside of your 
textures folder, you should see that you have a new clear image. And you're going to be using this clear image in combination with whatever image this is, your texture image, in order to create an animated texture. So in order to actually create the animated texture, just get any animation generator for Minecraft. So I'm just using Mr. Crayfish's generator because I know he's a good YouTuber and it's not going to give me viruses or anything like that. So I just go over here and just hit downloads and download the universal. And once it downloads, you can open it up in your download folder. It might warn you, but uh, it works for me and I don't have a virus. My computer's not dead yet, so it should be fine. Just hit keep or whatever it says and try to open it. Just right click it and hit open. And it might give you a warning, but just hit open. And once it opens up, you should see a little window like this that just says animation creator. And it's very simple. So first, all you have to do is click size, change it to whatever you want, 32. Then just simply load in your images. So now what you want to do is go back to your template and see how many frames you have. So you have four frames and you're going to need for the first animation, you're going to need one opaque and the rest are clear. So I'm just going to hit load images and then just import your images from wherever they are. Once it's imported, you should be able to see that there are the appropriate amount of textures. And all you have to do is select your opaque model and just hit the arrows to move it around depending on which model you want. So for the first model, according to the diagram that we drew up, we need the first frame to be opaque and the rest to be clear. And that's exactly what I have here. So it's opaque, clear, clear, clear. So now all you have to do is hit export and then export it somewhere. Choose a file name for it. So I'll say left fin and then I'll just hit save. So the two files that it should create are leftfin.png or whatever you named it. And normally this would look like a strip, but since we have transparent textures, it just looks like a little cube. And then we also have our png.mc meta. And as you can see, this is a very simple file, but all it has is frame time. And this is how long you want the animation to sit. So for me, I set it to five because I want it to last for a quarter of a second for each of the frames. But if you want your animation to be really fast or really smooth, maybe then change your frame time all the way down to one. The important thing to remember is that all of your MC metas for your animation have to match or else you might see uh, duplicate tails or legs or whatever you have existing at the same time. So I'm just going to set it to five and hit save. Then take these two files and drag them into your assets folder and import them into Blockbench as normal. Once they're in your textures folder, you could just drag it right into Blockbench and it should work as any other file. So now I'll just show you the examples that I have. So as you can see, what I have is center tail, left tail, and right tail. And as you can see, it should match whatever you have. So center tail, as you can see, mine is really small. It's just two frames because you don't need it to repeat if it doesn't have to. And as you can see on our diagram for the center tail, it's glass, red, glass, red, and you really don't need it to repeat because it's gonna repeat itself anyways. So you could just have it have two frames. So center tail is just opaque, then clear. Left tail, I have clear, opaque, clear, clear. And then right tail, I have clear, 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 opaque. And the reason it's different from our diagram is because instead of starting on the left tail, I started with the center tail and made it travel to the left tail. It really doesn't matter what order you have it. You just have to make sure that it will work. Also, something to note is that the frame time for all of the MC metas is five. And I'll show you what happens if you set it to inconsistent numbers. So I'll set this to three. So as you can see, if you have the frame time not all match, then you'll get some really buggy looking stuff. So the middle frame is moving a lot faster than the other two, which is why you see it just randomly pop in and out. So make sure your frame times match to make it smooth. Once you have your mob's animated textures, just make sure to apply it to the right part of the mob, and then you should have a fully completed animated mob model. And if you want it to only animate when the mob is moving, you could implement it similarly to how we implemented the movement of the other method for creating animated models. But instead of having to do all this extra timer stuff, all you have to do is detect if the motion is zero and then replace the model with the static model and then detect if it's not not moving and then replace it with the animated model. So you don't have to do all of this extra timer stuff. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found some of these tutorials helpful. And if you have any more questions about how to do the animations or anything else, make sure to leave a comment in the description or join the Discord server.
So I'll see you guys in the next video.